Copper has been an important part of the Keweenaw Peninsula's history for thousands of years. The Delaware Copper Mine Tour lets you see that history firsthand. Located 12 miles south of Copper Harbor, Michigan, the Delaware Copper Mine has been offering tours since 1977. Tom and Lonnie Pointer run the Keweenaw's oldest attraction. If you visit, you just may get to see their pet skunk, Snickers. Tours begin in June and end in late September. And the mine is pet friendly. The Delaware Mine operated from 1847 until 1887. Initial investors, including influential newspaper editor Horace Greeley, hoped to cash in on this region's large amounts of copper. Dennis told us more. From prehistory to 1980, two-thirds of the world's copper supply came from this region. This region being the 77-mile strip of land as the crow flies from Copper Harbor to Ontonaga produced two-thirds of the world's copper. Pretty incredible amount. There's a lot of value that went with that. Just one of the mines produced over $22 billion worth of copper. Over 7 million pounds of copper were retrieved from the Delaware mine, but that wasn't enough to maintain a profit. The historic 1800s mining site was largely left intact. It is a great example of our country's first major mining boom. We're going to give you a little background on the copper mining in the region. So this is called flow copper. This is a 2,140 pound piece of pure copper. It's called flow copper because it was sliced off from a larger vein of copper by the glaciers when they came through here eons ago and it was pushed around on the surface of the earth, hence the term float. Interestingly enough, they're still finding these in the region. Some high school kids last summer found south of Houghton a piece of float copper that weighed in at 1,100 pounds. So they're still out there. Grab a hard hat as you prepare for the tour. So anyway, here's how the tour works at the Delaware. It's a self-guided tour of an 1840s to 1880s era copper mine. To take the tour, you have to go down 100 stair steps to the first level of the mine. When you're on that drift, you travel it for 1,400 feet. There's various displays, points of interest, things to learn about along the way. Not only about this mine, copper mining in general, and a little bit about the area. When you get to the barricade at shaft number three, you really don't have any choice but to return that same 1,400 feet and up those same 100 stairs. We don't add stairs when you're in the mine, but it's 100 in both directions. It's 45 degrees down in the mine, so you have to layer up a little bit to be comfortable down there. The tour price is $12 per person, cash or personal check. We don't process credit cards. Um, that tour admission includes viewing of the surface points of interest, which includes the ruins of the buildings that supported the mine in its heyday in the 1870s and 1880s, and also a visit for photographic purposes to the prehistoric copper site that dates back to 5000 BCE. Before you go down, I show you a four minute video that sets the stage and tries to remove any surprises you might have from being underground for the first time. As you leave the gift shop, you will notice the mine's entrance. Here you travel through shaft number one to the first level of the mine. Being a mine, the lighting is well limited. This is intentional. They want to emulate what the miners went through, so the mine gets darker as you go. Near the stairs is a closed off drift. A drift is a tunnel made in the rock. This one goes down 200 feet and failed to be profitable. There are timbers from the original 1882 skipway. The skip car was pulled by cable and used to transport the mined rock. There are also original rails from the skip car to the tram car. The trams were pushed by hand and dumped. A pipe carried compressed air to power the machinery and drills. 
the power drills made the operation much more efficient. Teams of three operated this drill. Wages ranged from 14 to 21 cents per hour. The miners would use crawl holes to transfer equipment between levels. If not flooded, you could look 100 feet below down to level 2. All nine additional levels of this mine have flooded. The open space left behind after mining is called a stope. Stoping in this mine was done to use gravity to assist dropping rocks into the trams. The stopes in this mine are at 24 degrees to match the conglomerate. The yield in this mine was 98.5% rock to 1.5% copper. Two other mining terms are demonstrated by this mine. An adit is a tunnel in a mine that reaches the surface. This one was created by mining through the red conglomerate rock. A raise is created by vertical mining. Here, they drilled straight up to see how close the greenstone was to stay in line with the conglomerate layer. The final area to see before you make your way back to the entrance is shaft number three. This area has more timbers, the original decking, and the pipe leading to the light at the surface. Be aware, bats live in this mine, a lot of them, and they're busy. <laughs> <laughs> there are bats living down here. You can hear them squeaking. Well, and you can see them too. Where? Just like open your eyes. That's not fair, right? I'm literally flying my camera. Do you not see these bats? No. Yeah, they do come very close to your face. Bats may freak some people out, but their presence here is positive. Bat populations across the nation have been decimated by white nose syndrome. This fungus can be seen on muzzles and wings of infected bats. You can help prevent the spread by cleaning your shoes and clothing between visits to caves or mines. You will follow the same path to return to the entrance. You can get a second look at any points of interest. Ah, that's Billy! Come on, it's Billy! Take the stairs back up to fresh air and stop back in the gift shop. Here you can check out a model train display, historical artifacts, rocks, and of course copper items. The Delaware Copper Mine has interesting things above ground as well, including the prehistoric copper mine, one of thousands found in the area. When we talked about our prehistoric site, we allowed our prehistoric site to be professionally excavated and documented one time in the 45 years we've operated as a Keweenaw Heritage Site here at the Delaware. And in that site, the archaeologists and geologists, through carbon dating, found these stone hammers in that site that date back to 5000 BCE. So copper mining's been going on a very long time in the region. In fact, that's an area of interest by academics now, and they've done some studies, and they've proved through methods other than carbon dating that mining's been going on here as early as 9000 BCE. That's just shortly after the glaciers receded. Early miners used fire to heat the rock. Then cold water was poured onto the rock, cracking it and breaking free the copper. The stone hammers broke the copper into smaller pieces. Native Americans shaped the copper into tools, fish hooks, jewelry, and other implements. It is estimated that prehistoric miners removed between 500 million and one and a half billion pounds of pure copper from this region. 
Many of the modern copper mines began at the ancient sites. Michigan native copper is the purest on the planet. The Delaware mine also has ruins of two of the original buildings. The powerhouse building would have housed the equipment needed to keep the mine functioning. A tower still stands today. The other building is the hoist house. It was used to lift ore cars up the shaft. Hoisting mechanisms are generally located adjacent to the shaft being used. This one was built when the previous proved to be insufficient. It was built between shafts number one and two and was powered by two steam engine driven hoisting machines. This area also has examples of some of the equipment these buildings housed. Pumps are often used in mining operations. This massive air compressor shows what would have powered the machinery below and tools like this nearby drill. Mine dumps, known as poor rock piles, cover a large area near the mine shafts. This rock was the byproduct of a once active mine. The Delaware Copper Mine is a great spot to learn mining history for your entire family. Like and subscribe to learn about more Midwest destinations.